In previous videos in this series, which I've linked here and below, I showed you how to download and install the GNS3 GUI. I showed you how to download and install the GNS3 VM, how to integrate the GUI and the VM together. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to download Cisco iOS images. So in other words, get images such as Cisco iOS V, Cisco iOS V layer two, so that you can build topologies with both routers and switches, as well as Docker containers. So let's build a proper network topology with routers, switches, and PCs, in other words, Docker containers to make it easier, and see if we can test Cisco iOS directly within GNS3. Now, please, if you enjoy this video, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel like this video as well as click on the bell to get notifications when I upload a new video. Okay, without further ado, let's get started. In this example, I'm using GNS3 version 2.2. .2. What I'm gonna do is create a new blank project and I'll call this Cisco iOS. So I've created a new topology. Notice that I'm using a, a local server as well as the GNS3 VM. In other words, I've already got the GNS3 VM integrated with GNS3. This is really important. A lot of people have asked me, David, why do we need the GNS3 VM? The simple answer is appliances such as iOS V, iOS V layer two, ASAV, uh, Nexus V, Juniper, Cumulus Linux, other appliances require the GNS3 VM to run. Now, there have been some recent enhancements which may allow us to run QMU on Windows, but it's still experimental, doesn't necessarily work. QMU is the way that we virtualize some of these appliances, and it requires Linux. So we need the GNS3 VM, which is running the Ubuntu operating system, to allow us to use QMU and virtualize Cisco iOS images and other appliances in our GNS3 topologies. So the short answer is you need the GNS3 VM if you wanna run Cisco viral images in your GNS3 topologies. Okay, so I'll open up a web browser and go to viral.cisco.com. Now I need to warn you, I'm gonna show you how to get images legally. You can find images on the internet and neither I nor GNS3 recommend that you do that. So I've gone to viral.cisco.com. I'm gonna click on get viral. If you don't have a viral account, you'll need to buy this for $199 a year. Unfortunately, that's the way Cisco do things. I can't change that. Cisco require that you buy images to be able to use them. Other vendors such as Cumulus or Arista allow you to download images from their website without any cost and use them in topologies such as GNS3 but with Cisco, you have to pay to get images. That's just the way that Cisco do it. I'm gonna click login to log into my account. I'll log in with my username, log in with my password, click my account, and now I have this option to download a viral. Now to download the images, click on all releases, select one here, and then choose the images that you want to download. So in my example, I want to download iOS V layer two. So I'm going to select that and click download. I'm going to accept the license agreement. And as you can see here, V iOS layer two QCAL file is being downloaded. I'm going to select iOS V. I'm going to click here because I want to download the latest release. Click accept license agreement. And unfortunately at this time, it's not allowing me to download. There's some problem with the Cisco website, I'll try again. Okay, so it worked this time, I can now download VIOS Advanced Enterprise. Okay, so once they've downloaded, I'll be able to import them into GNS3. So I'll speed up the video at this point so we don't have to wait for the files to download. Okay, so the images have downloaded. Here's iOS V layer two, here's V iOS or iOS V. So in GNS3, I'm gonna go to routers, click new template. 
I'm going to install an appliance from the GNS3 server. Click Next. In this example, I'm going to select Routers, Cisco IOS V. Notice the emulator is QMU, which means we want to run this on the GNS3 VM. I'm going to click Install. I want to install the appliance on the GNS3 VM. This is recommended. Notice remote server is grayed out. That's because I don't have a remote server configured. I can't run this on the local computer, so I'm going to click Next. QMU settings, I'm going to leave at the defaults and click Next. GNS3 scans the local directory for files that are required. It's found the VIOS image, which I've got in my downloads directory. It doesn't have the startup config file, so I'm going to select that and click Download to download the config file. That takes me to sourceforge.net. I'm not going to accept the tracking. I'm going to save the file to my local computer. Back in GNS3, click Refresh. The file has been found. I've got my operating system, so I can click Next. I'm asked, would I like to install iOS V? Yes. The image is uploaded to the GNS3 VM. I'm also told that there's no default password and enable password. I'm going to click Finish and then click OK. So iOS V has now been successfully installed. I'm going to go to Switches, click New Template. I'm going to install an appliance from the GNS3 server. Click Next. In this example, I want to install Cisco IOS V Layer 2, also QMU appliance. Click Install. I'm also going to install the appliance on the GNS3 VM and click Next. I'll leave the QMU settings at defaults. Click Next. I can see that this appliance is ready to be installed. Click Next. Say yes to install it. There's no default password and enable password. Operating system has been copied to the GNS3 VM. Click Finish. Click OK. I now have an iOS V Layer 2 switch, which I'll drag to the GNS3 workspace. I'll do the same with a router. And actually, I'll add two routers to my topology. So I've got router 1, switch 1, and router 2. I'll connect the router to the switch and the switch to the second router. Now, these take a while to boot up. So what I'll do is start them up while I'm busy fixing my topology. I'll also open up a console to the devices. So my first iOS V device is displayed, my switch is displayed, but my second router isn't. So I'll right click and click console. That's now displayed in Solar Putty. So there's my first router. Here's my switch. Here's my second router. So while those are booting up, I'll change the symbols here. You can change it through the templates if you want to. So I'll show you that in a moment. But for now, I'll simply change the router symbols and switch symbol directly through the GNS3 workspace. So I want to change the symbol of the switch. In this case, I want to set it to square. I'll use a multi-layer switch here. So there's my switch and my two routers. To make the topology look good, I'll snap them to the grid and show the grid. So I'll snap them like that so they look better. I'll also show interface labels so that looks better. And then I'll remove the grid and remove the snap to grid. So there's my topology. I could also fit in view that way to make them bigger. So they fit nicely. Back in Solar Putty, devices are booting up. Now this GNS3 VM doesn't have a lot of RAM and CPU. All I allocated to it was two gig and one virtual CPU. So not much has been allocated. You probably want to allocate more than that if you're going to be running iOS V layer two switches and iOS V routers. So as you can see, they're not running that quickly in this topology. But okay, my first router has booted, so let's give it a name, router one. I'll give the gigabit interface an IP address of 10.1.1.1 slash 24 mask. I'll configure a loopback on the router as well. 
of let's say that. So show IP interface brief shows me the IP address on the gigabit interface and IP address on the loopback interface. I'll save the router configuration. That's now been saved. On router two, do something similar. Host router two, interface gigabit is zero, zero, no shut it. IP address 10112 slash 24 mask. I'll create a loopback of let's say 2.2.2.2. And hopefully I'll be able to ping router one from router two. So actually router one. And there you go. So router two can ping router one. And router one can hopefully ping router two, which it can. What I'll do on router two as well is enable OSPF. So let's enable a routing protocol on this router. I'll put all interfaces in area zero, do the same on router one. So router OSPF one, put all interfaces in area zero. So hopefully, will form a neighbor relationship from router one to router two. So at the moment it's two way. Might take it a while because I once again don't have a lot of RAM and CPU enabled on the GNS3 VM. While we're waiting, I'll save the router configurations. So show IP OSPF neighbor, still two way. I haven't configured the switch. So I'll simply give the switch a host name and then I could on VLAN one, give it an IP address as well to make it part of the topology. So something like that. And it should hopefully be able to ping the routers in the topology. So there's my ping. It can ping router one and it can ping router two. So I'll save the config of that switch as well. So show IP OSPF neighbor on router one. We can see that the relationship went to full. You can see that there again, show IP route. Routing table is displayed and router one should be able to ping the loopback of router two, which it can. Router two should be able to ping the loopback of router one, which it can. Okay, so there's a topology with a Cisco switch and two Cisco routers. I said I'd show you how to add a Docker container to the network. So under end devices, I'm gonna add a new template. I'm gonna install this from the GNS3 server, click next. I'm gonna use a guest. In this example, I'll simply choose something like Ubuntu Docker guest container. This runs Docker, which means it'll automatically download the operating system and make it available to me. So I'll install the appliance on the GNS3 VM and click finish. Appliance has been installed. Now again, you can change your templates so that you don't have to constantly change the symbols in the topology. So here, I'll choose client so that my template is using the affinity symbols. So when I drag it in to the topology, that symbol will be used. Now in this example, GNS3 is doing a pull. So it's pulling the image and installing the Docker container automatically. And this is what I like about Docker. You don't have to download a VM. You don't have to do some complicated setup. You can simply add it to your topologies and then pull it into your topology. Okay, so there's my Docker container added to the topology. Now. When you right click on this, you can go to edit config and you can statically configure the IP address here or use DHCP. So what I'll do is I'll manually configure the PC with that IP address default gateway and DNS server. So basically pointing it to router one. I'll click save and then I'll start this up and then I'll right click and open up a console. So hopefully now my Docker container 
we'll have an IP address. So ifconfig IP address is this ping 10111. I can ping router one and router two and the switch from my Docker container. Just to prove the point on the router, debug IP ICMP on the Docker container, ping router one. Notice in the output, you can see the debugs showing us that the ping was received successfully. So the Docker container can ping the router and the router can ping the Docker container. Okay, so that's how you get a topology up and running in GNS3 with Cisco devices. I've got a Cisco switch, I've got two Cisco routers, I've also added a Docker container to this topology. This is all running on the GNS3 VM, which in this example is hosted in a VMware Workstation Pro. Now don't forget as always, when you've got devices such as Cisco devices, you should save your configurations once you've finished. In this example, I don't have to change my Docker container's IP address. That was configured through the GNS3 GUI. I'm gonna stop my GNS3 topology and I'm gonna close GNS3 down. That'll shut the GNS3 GUI, but it'll also shut down VMware. So in other words, the GNS3 VM has also been closed. I'll start up GNS3 again, just to make sure that everything works. Once again, when you see this, wait. Wait until your servers have started. So don't try and open your topology yet. Wait for the GNS3 VM to boot up. Successfully show the GNS3 menu, and then you can open your GNS3 topology. So there you go, it's booted up. So I'm gonna select recent project Cisco iOS. There are my Cisco devices and my Docker container. I'll click start to start this up and I'll open up a console to those devices. Okay, so there's my first router booting up. There's my second router. Here's my switch and here's my Docker container. One of the advantages of Docker is it boots up extremely quickly. So it's almost instant boot on Docker containers. These devices will take a while to boot up. Now it's taken it a while, but the devices have booted up. You may hear that there's a lot of noise. The fan on this laptop is going crazy because these devices are quite large and use quite a bit of memory and CPU. But as you can see there, show IP route on router one. We've learned a route to the loopback of router two. So I can ping the loopback of router two. On router two, I should be able to ping the loopback of router one, which I can. Switch should be able to ping both those routers. I haven't enabled a routing protocol on the switch yet, but I could do that if I wanted to get it to ping the loopbacks. Docker container should be able to ping the loopback of router one, which it can and it should be able to ping the loopback of router two, which it can. It's got a default gateway of router one, so it can successfully ping the loopbacks of both the routers. Okay, there you go. I've successfully built a topology with Cisco devices and a Docker PC in my topology. Now, if you don't mind, if you enjoyed this video, please like it. Please also subscribe to my YouTube channel and please click on the bell to get notifications when I post a new video. I'm David Bombal, and I want to wish you all the very best.